you can start now. Great. So thanks to everybody who's joining me here on the webinar, my admissions at Odensea Business School. And I'd just like to uh, take some time to talk a little bit about sort of what we do at Odensea and a little bit about our programs and our history and philosophy and connections to business. Uh, I do want to let you know that I'll be leaving a little bit of time at the end for any sort of questions. So do use the chat box to ask any sort of questions. Once I'm finished with the presentation, I'll go back and see uh, what sort of questions that you might have. So uh, we are Odensea Business School. We are an international business school located in France. Uh, so we've been around for a little more than 120 years now. Uh, you can see we were founded in 1900. Um, and the pillars that we really rely on to assure the quality of higher education that we provide is really based on you know, academic excellence, the professionalization, we pay a lot of attention to that, and also sort of incorporating this international environment so that our students can really kind of get an idea of what it's like to work on an international scale, which is where a lot of our students end up finding their careers once they graduate from our programs. Um, one of the main ways that you can tell about accreditation is, or about quality is through accreditation. So we have lots of different accreditations that um, we've earned over the years, but I think the, the gold standard are really these three that you see here. So that's ACSB from the United States, Equus from Europe, and then AMBA from uh, the United Kingdom. And you know, any program of quality should have at least one of these accreditations, but luckily we're one of the uh, fewer than 1% of all business schools that have all three. And in addition to that, I think employers really pay a lot of attention to the different rankings. So here you're going to see not only um, the international rankings with Financial Times, QS, CNN, The Economist, um, but also some national rankings here. Typically we are ranked number six in France. Uh, top 20 to 40 in Europe and top 60 to 80 worldwide. So, um, you know, when our students are, are looking for employment after graduation, a lot of times these employers are paying a lot of attention to um, the sort of rankings and accreditation to assure the quality um, of the, the students that they're hiring. And to give you a little bit of a snapshot of um, what it looks like to be on campus, I mean, we are a graduate school of business. So in our graduate school of business, we have about 5,300 students. 34% um, of which are coming uh, from outside of France, and they come from more than 100 different countries. And, and once again, that's one of the pillars that we really work on is to provide this international environment where students can really uh, learn from each other and how to work on that international scale, because it's going to imitate what they will find uh, in the jobs later on, you know, learning how to work with people on different projects and presentations and simulations is key to the learning process with us because we want students to have that experience so they'll feel comfortable when they do have those international responsibilities. And really we're preparing people for managerial roles and anybody who's working in a business today knows that, you know, pretty much every business now is international in some way or another, whether we're working with international partners or suppliers or head offices, you know, having that experience and feeling comfortable working in those types of areas um, is, is really important. And you can even see here um, on the left-hand side, The Economist has ranked us in the top 10 in the world for diversity. And I think we really find a um, a strength in that. And, and that extends into the alumni network that we have. Um, so you can see a little bit here about uh, our network, not only with alumni, but with the different partner businesses that we have. So we have a, more than 160 businesses that we're working with every year um, in a very direct way. You know, these are either people who are coming on campus to hire our students directly, or, you know, they're working in some way with us on trainings or, or different aspects of, of higher education. So, you know, it really just kind of shows that our approach is much more practical. We're teaching people how to do a job and we're accompanying them uh, through their professional career. So it's not just about having this sort of really academic um, you know, theoretical approach to management, but instead it's about how can you do the job and how can you get the job, um, which is often a, a skill I think that is is missed in some of these programs. You know, you'll find programs worldwide that have marketing and accounting and, and human resources programs, but I think that we pay a special amount of attention to career development. Um, you know, it, it really is important to be able to help students into that next phase in their career. And we want to focus on that. The, the one or two years that you spend with us, that's great, but we should really be setting you up for the next uh, decade of your career. And that's kind of our approach. So you can see here that we have uh, more than 90% of our students are placed within two months of graduation. 
and if you remember back to that previous slide where I said we have 5,300 students, every year we get more than 17,000 job offers that are sent directly to us. And at any one time, we'll have 2,000 students who are doing their internships. And just remember that for all of our programs, there is some sort of company mission like an internship, or if you're starting a business that's working with our business incubator, um, in order to be able to show practically what you're doing. And I think that this will also uh, have an effect on the employment rates that we have because you know not only do we have more than 90 percent of our students that are placed within two months but two-thirds of our students get a job offer before they even graduate and i think a lot of times that's linked to the work that they do um, in their internships you know they're going in and working with these businesses uh, at the end of their internships they're handing them the report about the work that they've done and when a company is looking at, at this they they can see oh the student has picked out a, a certain issue that we wanted to work on and they provided a good solution, maybe we should just keep them on as a manager in order to, uh, you know, move forward on those types of projects. So, you know, really everything that we're doing is meant to be very practical and leading to these careers that students find after graduation. And you're going to find a few different ways that we help students to professionalize themselves. So we have career counselors that um, are available for all of the different programs and, and it's a mandatory part of the sort of experience that we have in these programs because we find it to be so important in allowing students to have the the most amount of advantages going into this next phase in their career and so they do a few different things one the career counselors are there really to help students with defining their professional goals and once they define those professional goals helping them to find those positions that match with the strengths and the interests of that students of that student and then these um, career counselors many times they've worked as headhunters or um, you know human resources managers for large companies so they really kind of understand the hiring process and once uh, they're working with the student they can help the student to understand what type of skills are necessary to work in certain industries or where the needs are growing based on market needs and then once they start finding those positions they can even help with things like understanding how to adapt your profile to the needs for that position they really have good insight on how to get people hired because they've been working in that process throughout their careers so they can help people to adapt their cv and interview skills to the particular needs of that position um, you know we do have these on-site and online recruitment fairs where those business partners come in to hire our students um, and they can even do sort of matchmaking because we also work uh, with services that face our, our business partners as well. So when they're looking for a particular profile, we can do things like print out CV books for them so that they can take a look at the students who have um, the skills that they're looking to hire for and set up interviews with them and, and really kind of help them along in that hiring process. And all of these services are offered fully online or on site. So. Um, you, know, you can always meet with your career counselors or do any of these activities online. And then just to kind of give you an idea, I mean, these are some of the brands that we work with. It's not exhaustive at all, but I mean, they're very uh, well-known companies that are looking to hire our students. And I think you could probably think of any French business that you know of. You know, if you've heard of them, we're also working with them in some degree or another. And these are the companies that aren't just hiring in France. They're hiring for positions all around the world. So, um, yeah, I think it really just kind of attests to the type of partnerships that we've built up in order to be able to help students uh, to find the jobs that are right for them and to get them into positions where they can um, advance throughout the rest of their career. Um, a little bit about where we're located. We are in Nantes. Uh, it's on. Uh, it's in France. It's about two hours away from Paris. So we are the large student city that's located outside of Paris. Um, we've been referred to as the Cambridge of France because you know, we're the area where there are a lot of uh, research centers and and institutions of higher education, and it's really well known and close to the capital. So within two hours, you can get to the capital, you can go and you can do tourism, or you can uh, do interviews, and it, it's quite accessible. And it makes for a very good environment to be able to study in because it's very welcoming to international people for expats. Because I think when you have so many institutions of higher education that are so well known in one place, automatically it's attractive to students that are looking to study abroad. And it makes it for a very good environment for them to learn. And there are many different services and activities that are available to help international students throughout um, their experience. So um, I think when we take a look at the, the, the demographics of Nantes, it kind of shows that as well. I mean, we are the sixth largest city in France. 
I mean, we're coming up on a million um, inhabitants in the city, but more than 60,000 of those are just students. Um, and, and many of those are international students. So walking through the streets, hearing several different languages, and all speaking at the same time is something that's not unusual, especially during the academic years when students are, are doing their studies in, in, uh, in our city. And like I said, uh, not only are we two hours away from Paris by train, um, but we're also just 50 kilometers from the Atlantic coast. Uh, it's known as a livable city. I mean, one of the nice things about being um, in the location where we're at is that, um, you know, you don't have the same sort of problems that you do when you're living in capital cities. I mean, we are known as one of the most livable cities in Europe. We were voted that by Time Magazine. And I think even here in the cost of living, um, it makes a big difference. For example, housing, um, you know, we have lots of different housing options and students that are registered on our programs are able to go onto a site and choose the housing option that's right for them. Uh, whether it's uh, public housing known as crews or private residences that provide more facilities um, and then other host family options that are available. I think it allows students to um, not have to worry about the same sort of stresses that you may find when living in a capital city. I mean, it's large enough where there's something that's always going on, but it's small enough where you don't have those complications of finding housing or, you know, transport and having to go, you know, one hour in order to be able to get back and forth from school. It's just simply not the case with us. And, and even just the way that we incorporate uh, sort of sustainability in the city, it makes for a very livable environment. You can see here that there's quite a bit of green space per person. And, and there are lots of cycle paths that you can use. Also in the background, I think on the left-hand side, you'll see our um, uh, light rail system. And it makes it very, very easy to travel from one place to another in the city. Um, people don't need to have any other sort of transport method other than uh, public transport here. We're known for innovation. I mean, when you have so many uh, quality um, institutions in higher education, automatically you're going to be producing a lot of research. A lot of people are going to want to start up their own companies that are um, sort of challenging the traditional business models that we've seen before. And so in 2019, I think that's one of the reasons why we were voted um, European Capital of Innovation. And that leads into us being this economic hub. I think in the middle, you'll see here, I mean, we're first in France for economic growth. And that is because of the students. They're driving that type of um, dynamism that you need in order to be able to have that type of growth. And even on the right, when we're talking about the rate of professional activity and startup creation, you know, there we're number one as well. Um, we do have some particular industries that we're working with, but it's not just, uh, I guess, confined to those types of areas. Um, here are our programs. I'm not going to go really into detail uh, about all of our programs because you can always contact us to ask for more information. We do have an online scheduling system where you can uh, contact us to see when you can schedule a call with us, whether it's by uh, Skype or by Zoom or WhatsApp. Um, you know, you can choose the time and date that's right for you and really kind of go deeper into the particularities of these different programs. You can see we have post-experience programs, pre-experience programs, ones that are uh, more specific and other ones that are more like an MBA style type of program. I should probably tell you about the application process because it begins online. Uh, basically, there are 100 points in total on the application and they're divided into different areas like English level or GPA or professional experience, all of these different areas. And students need to have 60 out of 100 points and a passing grade on the interview in order to be admitted. And all of these points are uh, published on our website. So any of the program websites in the admissions and finance section, you're going to see um, where these points are, are, are divided into. And you can already kind of see what the likelihood is of admissions, uh, depending on what your profile is and depending on what the program is. But once you finish that online application, um, we will be contacting you in the business day that follows. And if you have all of the different documents and requirements for the program, um, we will uh, organize with you to schedule your online interview. And once again, you go and choose the time and date that's right for you. And then once the interview is over, you will have the results within one week. There are admissions uh, committees that decide on these types of uh, uh, questions about admissions and, and it's no longer than one week in order to be able to get uh, the results for that. So here's our team and this is how able to get a hold of us. So like I said, if you do want to schedule a call with us, 
um, you can contact us at international at odensia.com. We'll send you that link uh, so that you can schedule your online interview. And then uh, we can kind of continue the discussion there. So I'm going to go into the questions that were sent through the chat box. And so are your primary programs only dedicated to Indian nationals or can any India resident apply for your scholarships? So we've got a variety of different scholarships. Um, some of them are dependent on nationality, but they're not the only ones. Um, so uh, there are project-based scholarships or merit-based scholarships or early application deadlines, and it's not dependent at all based on nationality. Um, now I have a question here about PhDs. Uh, we do offer PhDs. I would uh, suggest for you to reach out to us at internationaladodensity.com because we're kind of a little bit focused on master's degrees here, but we do have doctoral programs. So please feel free to uh, contact us at internationaladodensity.com and we can, uh, we can get you more information on how to, how to apply. The process is, is a bit different. Um, and then do you have an in-house boarding facility on the university campus? So what we have is an online housing platform where somebody chooses the, the housing option that's right for them. So uh, there can be ones that are closer to the city center. We are about 15 minutes north of the city center by light rail, um, that tram system that you saw there. So you can choose housing options that are located closer to campus or locally located closer to the city center or a variety of different locations around the city. So you're able to actually select which one is best for you based on rent, based on location, based on facilities, all of these different things. And there's a platform there. And there's a coordinator in case you have any sort of questions. They're always available for that. Uh, do you have a program master of food science and technology? What we have is a master in food and agribusiness management. So a lot of times we have people who are coming from food technology backgrounds that choose this uh, specific master's degrees as a way to sort of complement their techn the technical knowledge, much in the same way as we have an engineer manager program, sort of taking engineers and teaching them about the different types of um, business techniques that they're going to be using as they go through their career because much like engineers I think um, people who are working in food science and technology find that once they start working in these businesses they are expected to have these types of business skills which weren't necessarily trained in their previous academic experience so um, I think it is this sort of um, complementary degree to a lot of different types of degrees, food and science, technology included, but also engineering and a whole host of different backgrounds that can go into different business degrees. How much is the fee for the master's in management program? So the master's in management program is a two year program. Um, in total, it costs 29,500 euros. So that's not per year. Anytime we're listing tuition fees, it's always on um, a, a total basis and not like on a per semester or a, uh, you know, a per year basis. So you'll always be able to see how those tuition fees are kind of divided um, on our website or, um, you know, on the list of our programs. But I would reach out to you and say, you know, if you have any questions, particularly about these types of programs or whether you would be eligible for them or, um, or whether, uh, you know, you have any more specific questions, feel free to get in contact with us at international at odensia.com. And like I said, we can always schedule a call that's a little bit more one-to-one uh, to deal with some of these uh, particular cases, because it's true, you know, when you're coming from different backgrounds or when you're considering different programs, it can be quite, uh, you know, confusing. There are so many different options and different paths that you can take through your career. So being able to kind of speak with somebody about your um, case and your background in particular can be um, quite helpful. Um, so I think those are the only questions that we have today. I think just to kind of finish up, I would kind of advise everybody uh, to apply as early as possible. I mean, this is something that you see in schools around the world, but um, you know, the earlier that somebody applies, the more scholarship opportunities are available for those students. Um, we do even have some deadlines that are coming up as early as next week for different uh, scholarships that are available for students. But basically, the earlier that you apply, um, the easier it is to be able to get into uh, other scholarships that you can that you can then accumulate in order to reduce that investment of tuition fees as much as possible. And then when we focus on helping you with your career goals and accompanying you towards that career path and putting you into those right positions and getting you placed into uh, the positions that are right for you, that's really where you're able to find this great return on investment. 
And um, so just to kind of finish up, thanks a lot to everybody for joining me today. Um, do not hesitate to contact us. Uh, uh, contact us. We can always, um, you know, like I said, schedule calls or, or reach out to you in order to answer your specific questions. But I would like to thank everybody again for joining me and, uh, and hopefully we'll speak again soon. Bye.